Well, this has uh, been an amazing time together with Dr. James Merritt as we've been featuring excerpts from his book as he's talked to us about it. You see it on the screen there. It's 52 Weeks with Jesus, Fall in Love with the One Who Changed Everything. By the way, before we get into this final segment, thank you for this and thank you for your wonderful crew in Atlanta who are here at, uh, here at the church. It's just beautiful and we've enjoyed it very, very much. It's been our pleasure and they are, they really are, they're the best to work with, and, uh, John. And from one Southerner to another, true Southern hospitality. Today, yes, sir. And, and we're grateful. But well, y'all are welcome. Thank you, sir. Uh, we feel it. So, uh, James, when we look at Jesus himself, and that's what this book is, it's, it's all Jesus, 24 hours a day, all the pages of this book. Jesus Christ is an overcomer. That's what you describe him to be. What do you mean by that? Well, there, there's one mystery that has uh, plagued humanity from the beginning of time, and that is the mystery of death. Here, here tell you a great story. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a golfer, I love to play golf, yeah. and uh, I'm, uh, uh, I've always enjoyed watching Tiger Woods, uh, at least as a golfer. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Tiger uh, was uh, being interviewed after he won his first Masters. And they asked Tiger the question. They said, uh, Tiger, if Bobby Jones were to come walking back into this room, and for the viewers, Bobby Jones kind of founded the Masters, was the first great golfer. Grew up in this part of the country. That's correct, mm -hmm. from Atlanta. They said, if Bobby Jones were to walk back into this room right now, what one question would you like to ask him? Well, they meant a golf question. They, that's what they meant. Instead... Tiger gave a metaphysical, spiritual answer. He said, if Bobby Jones came walking back into this room right now, I would like to ask him, how did you come back? How did you get out of that grave? And I, when I read that story, I thought, I wish I could have been there. I would love to tell Tiger how to come back. The point being, the greatest mystery that humanity's always faced is, is death. Can you overcome death? Is there something to the other side? Is there another side to go to? If there is, how do you get there? What happens to us after we die? And do, can we have any control over where we go once we die? And the whole section about Jesus being the overcomer is that Jesus didn't just die on a cross, and it's important that he did. If, if he didn't die, he couldn't have done what he did. As a matter of fact, if he wasn't who he was, he couldn't have done what he did, but he did what he did because of who he was. As the Son of God, He could die for our sins. But too many people leave Him on the cross. The game changer for Christianity is the resurrection. So true. Because here's, here's what I love. and so I heard, I'm not the one that said this, but I heard someone else say it. So I heard, a, I heard a, a great communicator say, people have asked him, well, why aren't you of this faith or that faith? Why are you a Christian? And his great classic response was, he said, well, he just said, I decided I would go with the guy that came back from the dead. I thought I'd go with him. <laughs> and so that's, that's me. You're born, I'm born. No big deal about that. Okay, Jesus was born. You live, I live. Jesus lived. No big deal about that. You die, I die. We all die. No big deal about that. But if Jesus physically came back from the dead, which no one else in history has ever done, the game's over. That's the game changer. That means he is the only one that can change everything, and there's nobody like him. He came back from the dead and stayed alive. And stayed alive. There's that's no correct. more death with him. No more death with him. Yeah. Absolutely correct. And that's where you should place your trust and faith is in the one who has that uniqueness. So the resurrection of Jesus is controversial by skeptics, but even uh, in the Gospels, there are those who uh, talk about in, uh, eyewitnesses. They, they talk about people who actually saw it. They were there. They visited with, talked to the risen Christ after they had seen him die on the cross. You know, this is a beautiful, you know, there have been plenty of books written about this, and I would encourage any skeptics watching today to do this. <clears throat> when I witness to skeptics and unbelievers and, and, and cynics and people like that, I let them know right up front, look, I'm going to talk to you about one thing and one thing only because this is the game. Nothing else matters. I'm not going to talk about the virgin birth. I'm not going to talk about the miracles. I'm not going to talk to you about Jesus as a teacher. Let's talk about one thing. Let's talk about the resurrection. I defy anybody to explain not only just the writing of the New Testament itself. I, I defy anyone to explain even the very existence of the church today apart from the fact the tomb was empty. See, here's the thing that nobody denies. <clears throat> nobody denies the tomb was empty. They've never found the body of Jesus. Nobody ever has. Nobody ever will. Nobody denies the tomb was empty. The question is, why was it empty? What happened? And anyone that will go and investigate just the facts themselves, 
The only true rational, logical conclusion is he had to have come back from the dead. That is the only explanation that fits all the facts. So, James, um, thousands of people are calling this month for this book. Um, they're ordering it. They're um, excited about it. As the author, how would you encourage us to use this book in the coming year? Yeah. If, if, <clears throat> if I did not know what was in the book and I, I buy the book, first of all, this is why I hope people will buy it. My number one purpose is this. I want to challenge anyone to spend one year with Jesus, one year with Jesus, and you see what will happen to your life at the end of that year. You cannot truly spend a year studying about Jesus the transformer and Jesus the teacher and Jesus the miracle worker and Jesus the storyteller and Jesus the answer and Jesus the overcomer. You cannot truly spend a year, meditate on his words, let the teaching in this book kind of just settle and let it plant itself in your heart and mind. You absolutely cannot be the same. It will, not, not the book, but the Jesus in the book will absolutely transform your life. So if I were to get the book, I would do just what the book really says to do in the title. I'd take a week. And that's why I just, you know, don't, don't rush through it. Take a week, take chapter one, read all of the relevant scriptures, read the teaching on that particular passage that week, look at the prayer that's at the end of that chapter, and then just that week, just begin to think about how does the truth about Jesus I've learned today how does that change my life? You know, th there are a lot of people, I tell young pastors this, we're living in a day and age when, when people, it doesn't matter how much truth you preach, people are always asking two questions when they come to hear you preach. So what and now what? Okay, Jesus was born of a virgin. We're in the Christmas season here. Mm -hmm. Jesus was born of a virgin. So what? Jesus lived a perfect life. So what? Jesus died on the cross. So what? Jesus raised it. So what? They're looking for the so what. And then the second question they're asking is, okay, now what? So what am I supposed to do? How does that impact my life? So I would encourage every reader, I, I, and, so, and I mean really challenge you, read every chapter and ask those two questions. Okay, in light of the truth about Jesus, I have learned this week, so what? What does that really mean to me? And now what? How can I apply that Jesus and that truth about Jesus in my life to make a radical difference in the way I live? So would you encourage people then to say, okay, how does this affect my marriage? Now what about my marriage? Now what about my dating? Now what about my giving? Now what about my worry? Now what about this? Because in so many ways, profiling Jesus the way you have, and because Jesus is who he is, you find yourself with answers. You may not know all the answers as the specifics as how to a life story you're going through may turn out, but you know how you should live your life through that challenge to live like Jesus. Let me give you a classic example. Let's just take, let's take the chapter on Lazarus. Jesus makes this statement to the sister, when, and it's a great statement. She, he said, listen, he who believes in me shall live even if he dies. Then he turns right around and almost makes a contradictory statement. He says, he who believes in me shall never die. Well, you want to say, wait a minute, Lord, now which way is it? You, if I believe in you, I'll live even if I die, or if I believe in you, I'll never die. Jesus would say, answer to that question is yes. Here's what Jesus meant. When Jesus said, John, if you believe in me, you will live even if you die. Here's what he obviously meant. John, one day your body's going to die. My body is going to die. You can't die. Every follower of Jesus Christ literally is indestructible. You can kill. You can. <laughs> if, if ISIS had me today and beheaded me, they can kill my body. Uh, they they can't. can't kill me. They can't. They can't because I am a follower of Christ. I have eternal life. Turn it around. He who believes in me will never die. It was Jesus' way of saying this body's not the real you. The real you is inside of you. It's, this body is not you. Yeah, this is just a container. Exactly. So, what's this? Your next door neighbor's husband dies and he was a believer. You have a message you can give to that next door Sorry. neighbor. You can go and say, listen, I'm sorry that your husband's body is dead, but I am so grateful your husband is not dead. He never died. He just changed locations. So there's a practical way you can even use that to minister to others in their greatest need of sorrow and grief. You've got a truth you can give to that person. He is the way, the truth, and the life. You've been transformed by Christ. Even we're talking here, and I, I, I want to conclude this uh, time together. You talked about your father changed by Christ and uh, talked about how the gospel changed your life. 
And you never want that to get old. You never want it to get stale. You, you truly work as you study the scriptures and as you've written this book. You want to keep Jesus Christ as fresh as the day you first discovered him or he first captured your heart. Yep, and I'll tell you the two ways to do that, John. Number one, every day, get in the word that Jesus wrote called the Bible. And so, you know, get in that word, read yeah. that word, and let God speak to your heart. The second way is as you get opportunity, and I know it's hard for a lot of believers, but as you get opportunity, just talk about Jesus. Witnessing's not hard, really. is. It's just talking about Jesus. It's just telling people what Jesus has meant to you and what Jesus will and can mean to them if they'll just give him the opportunity. Uh, give us an update before we leave about uh, Touching Lives, your ministry. Tell us about the church, and, and, yeah. and you've, had, you've just come out of a really good year we focusing really on Jesus. Share with us how Jesus is using you and your congregation. Well, I have found, first of all, about Touching Lives, we, we have a great team, great leadership. Ron Lambros is the president of our ministry, doing a phenomenal job. We're now, I think we're reaching, we reach over a million people a week uh, on our ministry. We're in all 50 states, 144 countries around the world. One of the joys of my life is I'm actually on TV in Bethlehem where Jesus was born every Sunday. Uh, we've got people in, in, in Israel who watch us on TV every Sunday. <laughs> so it's, it's great. And, of course, the, what keeps us going are the testimonies that we hear, the people who've come to Christ. The, we've, got, we've got people of other religions and faith that are coming to Christ. And, and those are the things that really keep sure. us going is touching those lives. As far as, as the church itself, as I said, it, you know, we, we've got, first of all, we've got fantastic people, great people. And we're a great location, great area here in Atlanta. But what I have found is this. Jesus said, if I be high and lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. There is still a great market for people and pastors who will just get up and just make everything they can of Jesus About and Jesus just exalt Christ. Jesus and live Jesus. And people know when they come here, they are going to get their wagon loaded with Jesus. <laughs> and I think your wagon will get loaded as you get this book. I wanted you to hear a little bit of that biography as to what's really going on every single day in the life of Dr. James Merritt. Because he lives what he teaches, and he has for decades. He has wonderful credentials. He's a great leader, has a marvelous, marvelous story, and uh, is leaving a legacy that is central uh, to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And a, a marvelous pastor and uh, someone who loves to share the story of the evangel. He is just a, a great friend of the faith. I want you to get the book. We want you to get this book. It's called 52 Weeks with Jesus. Here's what you need to do. Would you just please call us, get this book, and make it a part of your brand new year's journey. It will help bring you closer to the Savior. And for those of you that are seekers, questioners, even skeptics, get this book. It condenses the teachings of Jesus and brings it into a very simple and clear understanding. James Merritt, thank you so very, very much. Thank you, John. God bless you and your ministry, and we look forward to having you back up in Burlington, Ontario very soon. Be my pleasure, and as we say here, God bless the United States of America, and God bless Canada. Thank you so much.